Hey, I'm Chase, and today we're gonna to talk about why this is not a red dot. So when talking about the differences in a holographic sight and a red dot, the first thing to understand is the actual technical differences in how those two different optical systems work. So a holographic sight is actually using a laser diode to emit a laser, which it projects onto a mirror, which is then reflected onto a collimating mirror or reflector, and then is actually projected from that collimating mirror up here in the top onto a collector, which you're actually looking through. So it's unlike a red dot in that the red dot is using an LED to project onto coated glass that is an a at an angle, which allows you to see that dot. Whereas here, there's actually a collector inside of the optic, not touching the glass on either side where the reticle is actually projected. And that comes with a variety of performance benefits that we're gonna talk about, but the technology itself is really important to understand because these are very different systems. Now, if you wanna learn a whole lot more about that and dive down the science rabbit hole that makes these things awesome, feel free to do that. You can always check it out on EOTech's website. But that's the brief overview on how a holographic sight works versus a red dot. In short, it's using a laser projecting on mirrors and is actually creating a holographic image which you are being presented versus an LED just projecting on some angled glass that's coated to allow you to see that particular light spectrum. All right, so let's dig into some specific performance characteristics of a holographic sight. So performance characteristics. Every single optical system, optical sighting system, is going to have certain things that come with it which may or may not appeal to you as a shooter. For holographic optics, there are a ton of benefits. First one we're gonna talk about is focus. So red dots and holographic sights are well known for allowing the shooter to be target focused. And that's a very handy thing, especially in a high stress hunting or defensive situation where our body's naturally gonna want to focus on the threat as part of our body alarm response. It's hard to fight that. You can help that with training, but why hinder yourself and hinder your natural response of your body when you can use technology to go ahead and actually enable you to fight more effectively. When you actually look through a holographic site, because that is being projected onto a, the collector in the middle of the site and not onto the glass, it's gonna appear as if the, the actual reticle is in front of the optic. And what that does is essentially it's superimposing that reticle not just over the target, which you'll sort of get with a red dot, but it seems like it's on top of or laid against the target. And that really lets the shooter focus hard on the target and still get a very clear and refined sight picture of the actual reticle. And that's gonna do several things for you. One, it's gonna make you a little bit faster knowing, having that good confidence that you're about to break a good shot. Two, it's going to allow you to keep more information coming in and processing it faster because you're not trying to switch back and forth between the dot or the reticle, the target, what's going on around you. All right, next, let's talk about field of view. Field of view has been widely discussed in the shooting world especially referring to optics. And basically it comes from a desire to be able to get as much information in to the shooter as possible, utilizing what we're used to seeing, both eyes open. Typically we're not walking around, one eye closed, winking at people. So if you can have a wider field of view with your optic and still be on target and have a clear picture of the reticle and being able to gather all that information in from whatever's going on down range, that's a big advantage to the shooter. And the EOTech allows for a great field of view because of how wide the window is. A lot of red dots are tubular in design. That's a requirement often because of the way the technology works. Uh, and that's just not the case with a holographic site. So this wider field of view, one, allows more information to come in through the optic to your eye. And that way you've got that information processing going on. You've still got the reticle there. So you're able to make more rapid decisions on shoot, no shoot. Like I said, it's also going to encourage you to have both eyes open. When you actually have this up in front of your eye, it's really, really easy to sort of just blow past the entire frame uh, of the optic itself. And all you're really seeing is that nice superimposed holographic reticle and the rest of the world around you. Another benefit of the field of view for holographic optics, and this touches on what we were talking about before with focus as well, is parallax or a lack thereof. 
commonly you're gonna hear, hear this referred to as scope shadow. Uh, and it's very, very common with magnified optics where if your eye is not directly behind that optic, inside of the eye relief or eye box. So you have to be a certain distance from the magnified optic and in line with the magnified optic, you'll see the shadowing around the optic. Now that's gonna be greatly reduced with your average red dot sight, but it's even further reduced with a holographic optic with this nice wide field of view. You can get anywhere behind this optic and as long as you can see the reticle, you're actually gonna be on target. All right, so next we're going to talk about the lenses, the performance that that offers, some benefits that offers, and also batteries. The lens coating on this is very non-reflective, and so in a variety of different lighting conditions and different angles, you're gonna get less reflection than you're gonna get off the standard red dot because one, the lens coating is much more extreme and that front glass has to be angled again to reflect that single dot back into your eye. So decreased reflection on the lenses, super nice thing. Also about the lenses, because of the way that the holographic image is collected and then put forward or projected onto the internal glass, basically that means that if the lenses, the outside lenses or the outside lens coverings really that you're seeing here, if those are damaged, the sight's still gonna function. The reticle will just shift and you won't even lose your zero. Now, obviously you wanna replace that as soon as you can, but if you're in a sticky situation and you get some snow or mud or something around on part of the lens, it's not, as long as it's not completely obscured or completely blown out, it's still gonna work. So does that mean you should go out and shoot your optic? No, probably not. But these things can take a ton of damage before they're really non-functional. And that's again, a big value add if you're operating in an austere environment where, you know, things happen. Another point to note about the uh, holographic technology is battery life. Now, there's no question that when you're running an LED, those are a substantially lower power draw, so you're gonna get longer battery life off of a red dot versus the holographic, but the holographic sites are still running anywhere between 1,000 to 2,500 hours of battery life and they have an auto off and that's user configurable as well. So you can set that up anywhere between four and 14 hours for when this thing's gonna turn off all by itself when you're not moving it around, it'll come back on and it has a lot of different options for brightness settings. So again, it allows you to dial in the brightness for your particular environment and different models of the Etex are gonna have night vision functionality or not. And of course, when you're running those super low power modes, the battery life is gonna be greatly extended. So you're still gonna get plenty of battery life out of these things. And the nice thing is they run off a of very common CR123 or AA's depending on the model. So those are, widely available pretty much the world over. So it shouldn't be overly hard for you to source extra batteries and keep them on your person just in case you're out for an extended period of time running in an extremely bright environment like much of the US military has been doing for the last 20 plus years. Let's talk about reticles. There's actually a lot to dive into here. So I'm gonna give you the caveat that because this is such a dense subject and it deals with a lot of ballistics, which is one of the biggest variables in shooting, honestly, because you've got to deal with your caliber, your barrel length, your atmospherics, your particular load, all of those things, then I will encourage you to check out EOTech's website where they break all of this down in detail ad nauseum. And that's really nice because there's some super useful information on the website. So go ahead and check that out. But as an overview, EOTech provides a variety of reticles in their sites, and their holographic sites specifically, for different applications. So let's start off with their most popular. Their most popular reticle is gonna be the 65 MOA ring with Stadia on the outside and a one MOA dot in the middle. First off, that one MOA dot is pretty much the most refined aiming point you can get. And that's another benefit over red dots because most of those only go down to two MOA. Again, a limitation of the technology red dots are running. And so that one MOA uh, dot in the middle is going to allow you to take very refined shots at surprisingly far off distances. Normally people are gonna say red dots, holographic sights are close range optics. And that's certainly true. That is the intent behind the design. But when you train with it and you learn your holds, you can take shots, and I have, past 500, depending on the caliber, with just a simple one MOA dot with that 65 MOA ring. The ring is actually useful as well. So that can be used for range estimation and holds. Again, depending on your caliber and your barrel length, 
but generally there are range estimations for anywhere from one, two, and 300 yards out based on the size of the target and where it sits between the dot and the ring. And then finally, that bottom stadia line you're gonna see in that 65 MOA with one MOA in the middle, most popular reticle is actually the seven yard hold. And that's super useful for a lot of the stuff that we see in modern combat, as well as competition shooting these days. A lot of this stuff is very up close and personal, and you're going to need to compensate for height over bore or the distance the reticle is above the actual bore line of the rifle. Because when you're shooting that close, you're not really calculating for any parabolic arc of the round. You're just right there doing work. And so that bottom little stadia on the on the bottom of the 65 MOA ring is an actual point of hold for super close range shooting when you need to take those low percentage or high risk shots where you may need to have pretty much extreme target discrimination between shoot and no shoot targets. And again, that applies in real life as well as competition. So that's super cool. Next, the two dot reticle again is ballistically calibrated to certain weapons. Again, I'll refer to the website for the ones that it works with, but generally it's gonna be for a 5.56 military cartridge, and it's gonna give you holds for your 100 and 300 yard zero. And again, the bottom of the 65 MOA, MOA ring being used for a 400 plus yard hit. And then finally, we've got that four dot pattern. And this is a really cool option if you're running maybe like a DMR, but you still need to be use it in multi-role. So it's maybe a, a more precision or accurate platform. But again, maybe it's a 14.5 barrel, something like that, probably running it in 5.56, most likely shooting a heavier grain projectile. And you want to be able to have, like I said, press that rifle into a multiple, multiple rolls, right? So I need to be able to run around with it, still clear rooms, do that sort of stuff. But I want to take longer accurate shots, looking for a higher percentage of first round hits at distance, that four dot reticle is gonna be really useful to you because again, once you get out and you actually learn your dope for your particular rifle and your particular ammo, you're gonna know those holds and that's gonna give you really specific one MOA aiming points, which again is a refined aiming point, which is super useful when you're shooting at distance on, because targets appear smaller. Then that four MOA, uh, or sorry, that, that four dot reticle is going to actually give you really neat uh, aiming options all the way from one to 500 yards. And again, that's a really useful thing in what typically is referred to as a close range optic. So there's just more things that EOTech's giving you with these various holographic reticles. Pretty neat. Finally, let's touch on some specific features of EOTech's holographic weapon sights. First, batteries. Like I said before, their sites are either going to run CR123 or AA batteries, commonly available the world over. And a nice feature is that their battery compartments are positioned so that you can change the battery without taking the optic off of your weapon. Even though their mounts are returned to zero, still, it's always a bit of a dicey situation, making sure you got the same torque back on the, the mount and you put it in exactly the right spot and you pushed it forward and all the things that goes along with Picatinny interface. So you can change the battery without taking your optic off and that's pretty cool. Like I said, it does attach to Picatinny. They've got this lower mount here. They also have this really neat QD mount, picks the optic up a little bit. And in addition to being able to raise the optic up off of that style of mount, we also have a variety of aftermarket mounts like this Unity Fast Riser, which is gonna pick the optic up even more, which is very helpful for that heads up shooting position because we, as natural predators, eyes in front of our head, we tend to look up, position ourselves up in an upright stance in order to survey our domain. And so getting that optic a little bit higher off of the weapon is allowing you to, again, maintain that natural head position. It's gonna reduce fatigue and it's going to reduce eye strain. Let's talk about the buttons. So depending on your model, you're either gonna have buttons on the side or on the rear, and you'll have a night vision button or just your brightness adjustment buttons. This is gonna give you a bunch of different settings for brightness based on your environment or whether you're super classy and you're running those nice EOTech night vision on your noggin. Either way, these things are gonna work great for you because like I said, you can adjust on those buttons on the fly. So if you're transitioning from a dark to light or light to dark environment, or maybe the sun's just going down or coming up, 
Again, the buttons are gonna let you do that really easily, and you're gonna be able to do it in gloves, again, because the way they positioned the buttons, you can get to them easily, pretty much regardless of how you have your optics set up with other accessories on the gun. And speaking of the buttons and the optic in general, it's also water resistant. Different models are gonna have different IPS ratings, but generally these things are gonna go and as deep as you want to in whatever body of water you decided to submerge yourself in, intentionally or not. We've all been there, nighttime patrols, or rain, snow, fog, all that kind of stuff. These things are gonna hold up to whatever mother nature wants to throw at you. So that's a overview of the optics and why they are not red dots. I hope you guys learned something, enjoyed it. Like I said, if you've got more questions, you can always check out EOTech's website or their social media. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.